Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I'm all the way driven family. Um, I guess y'all better get used to me making videos while I'm at work. I'm greasy and rough right now. I just finished doing my rounds, but um, I'm going to just be saying what's on my heart, just doing random topics. But the topic that just kind of hit me, um, I've thought about it before, but I guess I've never actually made a video about it, was the reason why I don't respect men. Obviously, I'm a man. I'm now 25 years old. African-American man living in America. Um, I've never been to jail. I have been arrested and detained, but obviously on some faulty stuff. You know what I'm saying? They have to check your ID, put you on the back of the car. Y'all watch my videos. Y'all already, already should know. But if you don't know, hit me up and I'll direct you where the video is. But, um, yo, in... in a lot of times as it pertains to my struggle with homosexuality and finding myself in the world, period, um, I try to find the root of the struggle. You understand what I'm saying? Because I don't believe nobody is just the way they are. It has to be a reason why they are the way they are. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes it starts so early, people don't always recognize it. But sometimes you have to dig really, really deep and you have to be brutally honest with yourself and say, yo, I may not know for sure, but this is probably the reason why I am the way I am. You know what I'm saying? Nobody is just impatient because they're just impatient. You know what I'm saying? They're impatient because they had to wait on this person, this person to come through, or this thing, and that, that. It's always a reason. You get where I'm coming from? So I was trying to think of the first man that I was supposed to love and he broke my heart, that would have to be my daddy. And I talk about him often, um, even though I talk about a lot of subjects, as I grow older and experience certain things, I really realize that I've missed out because he wasn't there, you know what I'm saying? And like I said before, a lot of times um, in families, men have male models to uh, reciprocate or duplicate what they see, you know what I'm saying? Because they have an uncle, they have a cousin, they have male cousins, so they were just never the only male figure in their life. They, you know, they just can, um, what's the word? They can only just look at themselves as a model. They had other people to, you know, to look at if they didn't have a daddy. But me myself, I mean, it was just me. It was just either me and my mom or me and my grandma. I didn't have no brother at the time. Sean didn't come around till I was in 12th grade. So I was darn near a grown man when he was born into the world. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, for, it's so much I can say, but um, I guess my main point would be this. Hold on, make sure people ain't in my business. I'm in the, um, what is this, the pool? Um, the activity room, I guess? The game room. The game room is what it is. But, um, yeah, so it was just me. And I always remember just fighting. I mean, people used to call me all types of things. Now it don't mean nothing to me. Like, I mean, people don't usually come at me like that. But, you know, people have their opinions, and that's okay. I mean, it don't bother me. You know, because I built up such an armor and it's not even nothing intentionally to the point, I mean, those things just don't affect you no more. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny, it's like kids growing up are so cruel and so mean and so cold hearted and just reckless. It's like they lost their heart at such an early age. You know, they lost their innocence. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad because that's the way the world is becoming. Even when I was growing up, even though I'm not that Oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm an 80s baby, but I was born in the 90s or raised in the 90s. It's amazing to know that um, things have changed so quickly. You understand what I'm saying? When I was growing up, kids were cruel, but they didn't have social media to do those things. When they would call you, well, at least for me, they, let's see, let's go down the list. <laughs> I hate talking about it because it's like, ugh, I don't even think about me like that, but I really don't care. But um, it's not about me. But I, I love sharing my testimony because when I get messages and people can relate to what I'm talking about, it, it just reassures, it reassures me that, hey, Xavier, you're not by yourself. People have struggles all the time. They may not be your struggles, but maybe they can relate to you in the same way on a different page. You get what I'm saying? 
And people used to call me um, gay, faggot, sissy, punk, soft. They used to say I had dick sucking lips. Um, I mean, although my lips are voluptuous, I mean, that's way before I even knew what sex was. So, I mean, kids were just cruel. Like, I mean, now those things, I mean, if people were to approach me or say something like that to me, I would not be moved. You understand what I'm saying? But you live and you learn and you grow. And I'm in relationship with men, it just haven't been good. I've just been to the point where I've been disgusted by men and knowing that I am a part of that species because it's such a, it's not a shameful thing because we were made in the image of God and he has created us. However, we have become something that God never intended for us to be. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not even saying that in reference to homosexuality, but just the character of a man, it doesn't carry a good reputation. You understand what I'm saying? When you think of women, you think of loyalty and them being nurse, nursing loving mothers and you know, carrying the family when that's the man job is to provide and protect. You understand what I'm saying? But now things have changed where the women, the woman has to be everything. When you see a father taking care of his kid, it's like, it's like you might as well give that dude an Oscar. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you don't see it. And it's such a shame that you don't see it like that. But I mean, although... Some people feel like, well, you should applaud the man for doing that because that's his job and, you know, that's what he's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? To each his own, but, you know, everybody have their own opinion, but I'm just saying. And, like, back to the subject at hand, why I don't respect a lot of men because they are liars. A liar is one of the most disgusting things you could ever be. You could be a lot of things, but don't be a liar because if you're a liar, you can't trust that person at all on any level. Like, you can't. You just can't. You understand what I'm saying? And just imagine loving somebody who you thought loved you back and they don't. And you're thinking to yourself, yo, if, if this is love, I mean, this is crazy. Am I the only one going through this? Like, this cannot be love. This is not the love that I want. You understand what I'm saying? And oftentimes in my life, I want it to be loved by a man just have that one experience like I've, I mean I give my all I've given a lot but I don't think I've ever, ever given myself all to anybody you know what I'm saying because whatever you do you are in danger whenever you give somebody your heart you're giving them the opportunity to break it and that's a precious treasure that we should not give to anybody you understand not just know anybody and I'm not even talking about your body alone but your experiences, you know what I'm saying? Things that you hold close to your heart, things that you wouldn't tell your mama, but something that you would share with your, your wife and your husband to hold, you know, keep them to death do your part. But now things are so nasty and disgusting. It's like now you have to prepare when you get married for divorce because now it's a financial institution. It's a financial gain if you guys split up. You know what I'm saying? It's, not, it's no longer just beneficial to the wife anymore I mean, a lot of times, I mean, it goes 50-50. And it's a shame that that you can be in love today and then tomorrow it all falls apart. That's the way life is, unfortunately. But the reason why I'm making this video, the reason why I don't respect men is because of those reasons. Because of the personal experiences I've had with men on a relationship level, on a friendship level, it seems like I've always been on the losing end. But at the end of the all, just to sum it all up, is you, I, I'm going to put it like this. I had to change the way I was thinking. Because if you don't change the way you think, you will always lose. You will always miss out. And it's not easy at all. Like, sometimes I have to ask the Lord, like, really help you, Lord, because I'm really not getting it. Like, it'll take time. Whenever it's a habit or addiction or a struggle, it's going to take time to get those images, those thoughts, those experiences out your head so you can live the best life that, you know, that God intended for you. Because you have so many bad experiences, it's hard to trust, it's hard to give yourself to somebody because it's like every time you do it, you always end up, you know, on the losing side, you end up getting the short side of the stick, you know, it really sucks. But you have to change the way you think.
because you'll never have nothing. You'll never have kids. You'll never get married. You'll never pursue a better job or a career. You'll never go to school because you're thinking, well, suppose I go to school and the teacher don't like me and they try to flunk me and fail me. And suppose I, you know, I get a job and they don't pay as much and, you know, I have problems with my coworkers and this and this. Suppose I get married and then I get a divorce and then you take away the kids and the house. Like, it's a whole bunch of things you can go on and on and out about. But you can't let that fear, because that's what it is. It's fear that, okay, but suppose... You get married and you stay married for an eternity. Till death do you part, until you're old, halfway in the grave, 80, 90 years old. God has intended for us to live a beautiful life. And it takes patience, it takes growth. It takes a whole lot of patience. I'm going to just be straight up with you. It takes, it's crazy because I have problems being patient with myself, let alone with anybody else. But um, I just want to share that thought with you. <laughs> this long video. But I love you guys. Uh, stay driven.